There's not many people around like Charlotte and myself who have all four limbs affected by some form of disability. So it's really cool that we've been able to reconnect and I've been able to help her out with a few things. Yeah, now you can move all of a sudden, eh? <laughs> Cameron Leslie and myself, you know, for Charlotte, you know, we can be role models to her. We're totally comfortable with who we are and where we want to go. Oh, oh, it's you, Charlotte! Charlotte's leaving me in the dark! Not being able to do the basics is really annoying. Well, I just want to be independent. Yeah, ready? And I just want to do everything for myself. Yeah. Charlotte is such an extraordinary person in such a significant challenge. We want to see her do well and thrive in her own life. She's 11 now, and she's got no qualms about who she is, how she is, how she does it. Yeah. This is her first year of year seven, and most kids are sort of just off doing their thing, whereas Charlotte needs to be set up and having the tools in place for her to do her things. That's the careful thing about um, having a high needs and, and catering for everything is that um, they don't even, they haven't even been taught, you know, how to do it themselves. By the way, this is lemon. I drink lemon every morning to keep me healthy. Okay, so get up, do breakfast, um, do the lunch, uh, get prepared breakfast so Charlotte can come and have breakfast, I go and get her. Rushing and stressful and lots of, come on, Charlotte! Charlotte! No! Eat your breakfast. No. Charlotte? No. What are we doing? What have we got on today? What's your subjects? I don't know. We're tired. I don't want to get up at. I will be more tired than you. And I'm 50 now. And because it days upon days upon weeks upon months upon years, you just get um, to a 10-year exhausted sort of place. Yeah, let's feed the dog. Part of my journey as the parent of Charlotte is, you know, I still long for those limbs that she lost. In June in 2004, she woke up suddenly at 3 o'clock in the morning, just had a massive temperature and vomited, and she had a, a really weird whimper. I gave her some paracetamol and she went back to sleep. What I thought was sleep, but what it was was toxic shock. I looked at her and I looked close and I saw a blood splatter on her neck and I just lifted her out and we ran to the medical center and I just ran in there and said, um, my baby's dying of meningitis. So after she had been put in intensive care, the team of surgeons, they were just crazy lumbar puncturing the small baby and it's tremendously confronting and you're helpless and hopeless to do anything. If you have septic blood, it comes through all your flesh and burns through all your flesh to the surface of your skin, forms blisters. The limbs had to die before us. It started off on her hands and just worked its way up. After about two weeks, it was just black. And until it had come to its final stage of depletion is where they knew where to amputate the dead pieces off. She went to war as a baby with bacteria and she won, but she came back an amputee. Yeah. 
I had to remove my own guilt of this horrific event because she was so happy and bubbly and she was showing me to shape up, basically, because she was. She didn't know any more or less. We just gave her heaps of love and I wanted to create everything to make it right. Not only just the repair of Charlotte, but it was we wanted to educate New Zealand around it and we wanted no other child to suffer from that. Put, put well, Charlotte, don't, 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 just relax. Just relax. Or it's going to be all funny. I'm going to take this off. Well, it's been hard, but it's been in her life for so long now. Voila! And we've already discussed that it's part of her life and she needs to be doing it in order to get on with her life. And so however long that takes is however long we'll be doing it. She um, needs somebody on a daily basis, but I want her to be in a position where she can do her own buttons up and and dress herself and tie her shoelaces and tie her hair up. Mum's got to get me dressed now. It's part of the routine. Some of the things that I should be letting Charlotte do is basically all her transfers yeah. and things. Wait. It's just the time requirements it takes to get you to places. It's just easy to sort of do it for and help her along, you know. Be fabulous. I don't think she has that long term thoughts. She just does her days in the happiest way possible. Just finale, I'm going to wear the lip balm that they get. I don't know how it's going to Thank you. look for Charlotte in the future. We just have to wait and see. My name's Cameron. I'm 25 years old. I live in Auckland, New Zealand with my girlfriend. I like doing things for myself. I guess you could say I'm fiercely independent in some ways. I've achieved plenty in my life, sporting-wise and outside of the pool. I've won two Paralympic gold medals. I've worked full-time. But for me, the most satisfying thing is just fitting into the world. I was born without limbs. From an early age, mum and dad pushed me to be independent. There was lots of tough love. Over the years, I've had many different types of prosthetics. For me, when I was growing up, I didn't have someone who was missing limbs to be a mentor as such. So for me to be able to do that now, and hopefully it can make Charlotte's life a little bit easier um, going through the years that she is, because they're, they're tough years. Any new legs today, or? Yeah, I'm really excited. I mean, like, I just want to be happy with my legs, and I hope that I won't grow out of them fast, because I really grow so fast, and, like, I hope I can do everything in them. I'm just looking at her physical at the moment, her fitness, and make sure she doesn't put on too much weight. So the only thing we can do is really just go hard with the legs and get her walking, 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 and perhaps running. Yeah, and have her mentors on call telling her, come on, Charlotte, because they're doing it themselves. It's going to be like soft tissue in the sockets there. I mean, there's, a, there's a small gap, which I think... You can get rid of. We can get rid of by when you... What is it going to mean when you are sort of walking and able to use these new legs you've got? Then I can show off to all my mates. Why do you want to do that? Because I can just, like, say, I can finally walk. Is it a case of keeping up with them and now you can go running with them? And... Yeah, because I... I don't really like cops and robbers. Like once I get those blades, I may be able to play cops and robbers. Okay, we can look at getting out of here, shall we? There we go. So what we might do is get you over to the rails. So we'll just get you to. I'll be simply bounce her way. Are you okay? Yeah. We can. We can um, move. Can I take you off? So mm -hmm. what's so what so what's it like when you when you just stand there, just gently 
with mum gently holding your hands. It feels like they're going to fall off. Yeah. Charlotte's at a, in an awkward sort of spot with her legs, trying to get sockets to fit, and she's just, she's young, so she's growing fast, and so she grows out of them before they're even finished, and then it's back to square one, and it's quite a frustrating time for her, really. Just get it rocking from side to side yeah. first. Yeah. Let's just do this. I've and already done that before. Well, you can do it um, and sort of get into that stance. What, I already know how to do that. Charlotte, we need to sort of go back and forth and then you can make some steps forward, OK? Let's go. I think it's hard for an 11-year-old to, to think of the bigger picture. No, we're not, because we're only done... Charlotte's going to need to, to have a strong core to, to help her walk in a good position while she's wearing her prosthetics and just find her balance where her body's at. Training the muscles to work in a certain way and to stay in that good position for as long as possible. In terms of Charlotte's previous sort of walking experiences, um, what has she done? Because she's been on stubbies quite a bit, no, but has she been on anything with a knee or anything like that? Or is that, I guess, It's something... too hard. You know how hard it is oh, with yeah. knees. And you're an Olympian swimmer with fitness of A+. Plus. Wasn't it always an Olympian swimmer, though? No. But um, you were able to stand prone because you had, you had your two ends were perfectly, they were never amputated, they were perfectly round. So your muscles were, you know, like, they're all connected. Whereas once you chop through muscle and things like that, the ends of your legs are sensitive to weight bearing. Yep. Let's just have a little walk there. Stop. They're too small. Well, you know, like, we've been here three hours and now you're saying that the sockets are um, too small. This is like um, <clears throat> 10 years worth and we're still not there. Yeah. going over to Waiheke Island to see Charlotte. Her friend Cameron Clapp has come over from the United States. The goal is for him to show Charlotte how he operates from day to day. Cameron's a professional mentor, so it's a good opportunity for me to pick his brain as to how I can help Charlotte better. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. So what is it that you, you like about mentoring, man? You know, what I think is really important about mentoring is being able to be an example to others and to show that anything is possible, especially with being able to be comfortable in your own skin and build your confidence and just be, you know, happy with yourself um, and then just you know, be able to continue to move forward in your life. Yeah, I had injuries due to a run-in with a freight train when I was 15 years old. I lost three limbs, two legs above the knees, and my right arm almost to the shoulder. And so my whole world was turned upside down, and, and I had this new experience of being a disabled person. And I never looked at myself as a person with limitations. You know, I just had to learn how to adapt myself to the world, um, not adapt the world to me. Are there any sort of pointers you'd have for me to sort of help Charlotte get up and moving and that sort of thing? Because it's all new to me and I, I do want to see her do well. I, I do want to make a difference to her and her, her life, I guess. Yeah, and I think it's, it's real important when working with another EMPT, being there with them and showing them what you can do physically, you know, with, uh, and how you've adapted to your situation, how you live your life in, you know, in each moment of the day. One thing that does worry me with Charlotte is um, when things aren't working and how to sort of help with that. Like most kids, you know, they're, they're only gonna wanna push it so far. And if she's, you know, saying I'm tired or, you know, is starting to break down and cry. Give her a moment, let her take a deep breath, but then, you know, it's okay, Charlotte, you know, 
Let's focus on the goals that you've set, the plans you've made. It can be difficult, you know, being young and missing multiple limbs, and hopefully she can be in a place where, you know, she can just continue to, to be confident in herself. Yo! Hey. What's hey, up? Ow! Ow! <laughs> hey, Char. How is it going? We have a plan. We're here to hang out with Char a little bit and do a bit of desensitization to sort of help with the whole stump feeling and that sort of thing so that the... Really? Hopefully, long term, the prosthetics will start to feel a bit nicer. Desensitization? Yes. We're going to... We're gonna get her up on her um, residual limb that she had um, revision surgery. Yeah. Just to promote some good, like, you know, being, being able to bear weight on the end of it. Okay, Charlotte, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna pop off our legs and we're gonna get down on the ground. We're gonna do some work, all right? Cause so your limbs are pretty even, right? On both sides, they're pretty, pretty yes. even. Mine is about maybe an inch longer on my left. Same. Okay. Is it now or either which one is right now more sensitive? Your right leg? Yeah. So this is what I this is what I do. So you can put your weight onto your elbow and you can get up and you can distribute weight onto probably this side more. You have to get through a little bit of pain for it to actually feel better. Do you want to show me how, how you do it? I just go up and then... Ow. The okay. one. That's how much weight I can put on. I'm almost lifting my whole... Almost weight. all the way on your right side yeah. now. It's that's awesome. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. I thought it might be a bit more sensitive than that, but that's also, that's... And I think that's good. And your right though. I mean, like, um, for weight bearing just on a, a cut bone as an amputation... Mm-hmm. There's no real knob on the end. You only just like, you've got flesh on a stick, right? Okay, where? Tell me. There. There? No, there. How does it feel, like when you're standing on it there before, like what, what's the sensation that you're feeling? Sore. Sore, like just a little bit of pain, bearable? A lot. I believe the more that you practice this and you do this exercise every day, I really think and believe it'll it'll improve and get better. When we're chilling, like right right now, when we we walked in here, it, even if you're watching TV, you can get up and you can lean against you know the back of the couch there and just stand on the end of your limbs. You're on a soft surface. Well, like playing iPad, leaning over the top of the couch, so you're standing in that standing position rather than being lying down and that sort of thing. Just little ideas to bring it into your life. Now stand up again, and I have a challenge for you. Take a nice, good step with your right leg. Keep on pushing yourself. Here, now hold on to me, okay? Hold on to me, and we'll, we'll go together, all right? We'll keep going, all right? Look at that. Up oh. straight, not on that bum. You're a miracle, you know that? That was fabulous. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're gonna come check out my place today, Charlotte. Yeah. You um. I, at... um, I think that we should make a Captain America pizza. We'll try and make a pizza. Yeah. yeah. You'll learn how to drive one day, Charlotte. There's no reason why you couldn't do it. It's easy enough. Bloody noisy motorbikes. How do you go forward? You pull the um, this little lever, 
as you accelerate on brakes. So you lift this, this normal hand controls, you lift it up to accelerate. Crap. And then you push it to the floor to brake. So it's a bit of tweaking to get the vehicle sort of driving for you in a comfortable manner. Yeah, just learning how to control a car as well. Because the way that I do things freaks some people out. I mean, they're like, you've got no hands and you're trying to do this with the steering wheel. Like, what are you up to? It's not safe. <laughs> but it's, I mean, I feel in control. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's um, very cool. Not hugely accessible, but it doesn't matter. Too steep. You thought you said they were little. So how are we going to do that? Okay. Yeah. What? What? Hang on. Okay. On the other side. <laughs> yes. Is it? This is so easy. It is so, so easy. Here we go. Okay. Charlotte to be in Cam's house where it's um, not modified at all, it's a good learning curve for Char. When Charlotte's in the world, we'll be dragging enough gear around with her. She has to work out a way to use an ordinary fork or flush an ordinary toilet and, and all those things. I think you guys are yeah. good to go. Sweet. Yeah. I'll leave you to it. And bye. And later. <laughs> Surprise you, Charlotte, that the kitchen has... nothing's different. Like, you've got to fit in with it. Yeah. Some people have benches that move up and down, can be oh, higher, can yeah. be lower. Or... I thought that this would be modified. <laughs> okay, um, I, won't, I little... won't be bothered to use that. What if you went like this? See how I'm pulling, like when I'm pulling the cheese, I'm pulling it into me and this yeah. is pushing against my body. No, I like to do, go out. Can you put one hand on the back and one hand on the front, like that? Like... Yeah, and then pull oh, towards. Yeah. Question. Yo. How do we cut up the olives without using hands? I'm going to use my knife. Do you have a knife? Nope. Do you have a fork? Yes. Will you use your fork? But right. I can't because, like. What if you, yeah, rolled it on its side? And then. And then lined it up. Lined it up? Yeah. Put these on. If you can hold the tray, oh, look at that, you can just push it forward. Look at this. And push forward. Two six. Uh. Should have asked, do you want a fork? I'm all right. How long have you been flooding for? Since I was 18. Do you think you'll ever want to move out of home? Um, probably when I'm 18. Do you reckon to like get to where you're talking about like wanting to live by yourself or live in a flatting sort of thing, being that whole independence, do you reckon you could, you reckon that there is little things in your life now that you could start trying a bit harder in? Like jumping from the seat onto your chair and that sort of thing. Yeah. Just to help your mum out, because, I mean, it's pretty tough on her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just take a load off for, for people around you. Like, just, your mum really is a champion, eh? She helps you out with heaps, and it's, like, it's, it's cool to yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. But I reckon you could help her out, too. Like a little team. <laughs> All team. Yeah, a little team. Team. <laughs> She's seen what being fully inclusive in society like Cameron Clapp and like Cameron Leslie, um, how much hard work that might take for her to be as able as them. Ollie! Ollie! That has been one of my dreams since I met Cameron Leslie and since I met Cameron Clapp. Just surround with all that can do stuff. These are stubbies okay. and blades. They're called junior blades. Yeah. Do you think you walk more in these ones than what you did your old ones? Yeah. Can we go over here where it's a bit more flatter, not on like a little hill? Where the stick is. Where yeah, the stick is. go there. I, I feel like pushing you, because I can. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> 
What I'm paying attention to right now is like my core. Like you have to like be straight yep. for, to do like even walks. Like tucking that, tuck, yeah. trying to tuck that belly button in. Yeah. Very good, I can do this. You're walking more in the May. You got a good fit finally. Yeah. You want to go into bigger legs or are you sort of no, happy I, with I'm, these I'm pretty tight happy ones? to be this tall. Yeah. I mean, are you? <laughs> Not really, eh? I like being tall. Well, my goal is to tie my core and like get better at stuff, be better at you at swimming, be better at you and everything, and uh, yeah. And then we walk around <laughs> in circles, right? Yeah. I was really impressed with Charlotte walking in the park. Blew me away. I didn't expect her to be walking for as long as she was in her prosthetics. How do you know to push me when I'm there if your eyes are closed? I don't know. Wait, are you are you are you cheating? No, my eyes are closed. Cameron and Cameron challenged me to do some outrageous things, but now it's time for me to challenge them. <laughs> I don't... Oh, oh my, my god! god. <laughs> oh. How are you? Cameron! Charlotte! And Cameron! We've been reunited! Cameron and Cameron in the house! Tell yeah, I me, mean, why do you want to chuck us out of a plane? Because it will be funny. <laughs> Charlotte, time out. You better stop horsing around. We gotta jump out of airplane. We don't wanna get hurt. Alright, getting geared up, getting suited up. I feel like an astronaut or something. <laughs> I've really enjoyed spending more time with Charlotte. What she's got ahead of her is going to be very difficult. But I know and I've seen that she's got this great attitude that will take her places that she wants to go. Having Cameron and Cameron as moon tools in my life means kind of a lot because they taught me how to walk and run in the first place. In this life, everybody is faced with hardships and with adversity and difficulties and challenges. And we're all one and the same with that, you know? It's a human experience. And how do you define somebody with a disability? You know, I go beyond that. I go to their soul and to their spirit, you know? And, and, and I know the human spirit's capable of overcoming any, any obstacles.